Keno's gone in hard on Ten Hag's Man United. I'm going to go through what he said yesterday. I missed it, but caught up with it this morning. I guarantee you will not be able to disagree with what Keno has said in this one. I was concentrating on what Gary Neville was saying, a few other people who were reporting at the game. I want to get into what they said alongside Keno, and it all sort of, it all sort of comes together in one sort of like issue that Man United have right now. I want to get your thoughts in the live chat on it. Obviously, when you're watching it later on as well, if you've missed the live show, but catching up, get your comments in as well. I want to get through as many of them today as well as I possibly can. You know what it's like on a Monday. We play catch up. We get in with everyone's comments and thoughts on everything that we missed over the weekend, which was pretty busy. But let's get into it anyway. Please give the video a like before we get going and hit that subscribe button as well if you are tuning in for the first time. I'm Adam. This is Forever United TV and Roy Keane has gone right in on Manchester United. Now, I'm going to say, first of all, he did give a little bit of praise for certain individual performances. Like everyone was going in on Willy Cambuela and Kobe Mainu. That is just a given right now because you cannot fault the performances of both players again and the maturity of two teenagers that have been thrown into what is a complete melting pot right now at Manchester United with failing superstars all over the place. Updates on Scott McTominay as well. Another three weeks possibly out for Scott. Another player out injured. This is getting ridiculously scary right now on that side of it. We'll talk about that as well and other targets for Manchester United in the transfer window that have been, well, rumoured to be going around again. More young targets, which is a little bit more of a positive and a sensible approach. And there is something I want to touch on on that as well, which I want to get your thoughts on as well, guys. But we could be talking to, say, uh, uh, an agent over... Transfer news right now, going on about stuff that everybody already knows about because it's a face everyone wants to watch. It. And, oh no, that's another channel, sorry. We're not going to get into that, but yeah, we're going to talk facts and what actually is happening at Manchester United here on Forever United TV. Welcome along to the show, everyone. Keen talking Manchester United, Ten Hag, where we're at, how poor we are. Like, I will say like, I said a second ago, sorry, I don't want to repeat myself, but I just did, but... Roy Keane praising the younger lads. I think that's right. Everyone has done the same thing so far. But Keane's comments for me are the ones that sort of resonate with a lot of the fan base right now. I'm going to touch on Gary Neville's as well. But Keane basically talking after the game yesterday, and I've only just caught up with this, was saying that Manchester United, I don't, I don't want to keep on repeating myself, but it literally is just a rinse and repeat every single week with Manchester United. As Manchester United fans, which obviously Keane is as well, you go into every single game worried right now. Minus one goal difference after 31 games of a season is completely unacceptable. Manchester United are a mid-table team fighting out for the top honours, which at this level is Europa League, probably Europa Conference League. This is where United are at. Every single game you go into it and you're worrying as a football fan, as a United fan, about what is to come. You have some moments here and there that give you a little bit, encour little bit of encouragement, but ultimately, it could all go the other way as well. And this is inevitably what is happening right now. Consistently, teams are figuring Manchester United out and knowing how to play against them. And it's easy to play against Manchester United and bypass United. And whatever Ten Hag sets them up as, there are good, good players at Manchester United. But Eric Ten Hag does not know how to set them up and does not know how to get the best out of them. If you go into detail analysis of the game yesterday, it's like people bringing up the obvious and it's stuff that everyone knows about. And like when Keane says, like, I'm, I don't want to repeat myself, but how many times are we going to have the same conversation? How many times is it going to be about why is Anthony at this club and when he is playing well, why is Anthony playing on the wrong side? Why are you playing an inverted winger that doesn't invert? Why are you not playing players in their best positions on the pitch? Gary Neville pretty much went into the back end of uh, what Keane was saying, but in a little bit more detail on how easy Manchester United are to play against. Like last night, he was we was going into it with Jay on the show last night about what Gary Neville was saying, how easy it is to get through Manchester United's midfield. It's like the basics of football, Manchester United just do not do. And it does not look like they know how to do them, which is worse. Now that is probably, that's probably the most condemning I think in terms of everything and how Manchester United are like we're all surprised like Manchester United right now how I would just how I would describe Manchester United now we are a walking goal of the season goal of the month contending side like we just 
pull things out of our ass out of nowhere every single game. You can go through the games like just off the top of my head, like literally right now. Yesterday, Bruno from the centre circle lobs the keeper to get us back in the game. First shot of the game. Then Kobe Mainu pulls out uh, a Makeda from Aston Villa from years gone by and turns a brilliant goal into the top corner. Kobe Mainu did it again against Wolves. Let's go back a little bit further, shall we? Sheffield United, Diogo Dallo, top corner from 25 yards out. Let's not talk about Bruno Fernandes, but what Bruno Fernandes does do, like he did against Burnley further back in the season, in another close win against the poor side, was another goal of the month where he hit the ball from Johnny Evans' long pass right into the corner on the volley. And then we just dropped down into the Everton game with Alejandro Garnacho and the goal of the century. This is what United are. We have fantastic players that look great on social media and look great on clips on YouTube. But as a team and as a unit, do not work together and just do not... What's the word I'm looking for? They just do not uh, look like... They, they don't look like they've played together. That's what I was going to say, sorry. They don't look like they've played together. That's the most concerning part about Manchester United right now. That's the most concerning thing about this football team and the club and what direction it's going. And it comes back into what Gary Neville and Roy Keane are saying. Like, we can all sit here like I do and, on our shows and we talk about And sometimes it sounds repetitive of what we're saying, but there always is another little angle in. It's like, And the big concern is it's like everyone is talking about it. The stubbornness of Eric Ten Hag and the stubbornness and arrogance of our football club is that they do not think that they have to copy or repeat anything else that other clubs are doing that are successful. We are Manchester United. We seem to have this aura about us when we're working at United and when... And do you know what? It goes right down. Like yesterday, just for instance, the idiot security guy at Manchester United, for some reason this club operates in a completely different way. I go down to it. I do work outside of Old Trafford. And I approach people outside uh, nicely, asking if they want to, and you get some, you get some really nice people out there. Uh, yesterday, not yesterday, sorry, last week. There's just an example I wanted to bring up because you've all seen what happened with the security guy and how abrupt he was and uh, how unpolite, let's just say he was. Let's put it lightly. But last week I was working outside of Old Trafford, just doing my thing. Uh, I approached a, a young lad uh, who. I was just walking down some at Busby Way, asking him the same questions like I ask everyone else, compiling a video. Uh, and his words to me were, I can't talk to you. I work for the club. In that tone, head down, just blank you like he was an absolute star, like he was just a celebrity walking past a lot of paparazzi. Don't talk to me. This is, and I'm not saying this is everyone at Manchester United at all because they have some great staff there at the football club, but it runs through the club. It breeds through this football club. Like, the way that United are on match days, the way that we get access, the way that the players are protected. And this is why a lot of the staff, I feel, the really good people at Manchester United, and I've, I've met loads of really good people at Manchester United. I said this on my show the other week as well. It's like, we're sick of trying to protect these players right now because of the crap. We can't do we can't do any more than what we're doing. We cannot make these players change. Like, we, it, we cannot say that they are something that they're not. And this is what's happening at the football club. And this is why Ineos and coming into this football club is so important that they get this right. Like, they're getting people on board. They're changing the culture of this football club. This goes all the way through from top to bottom at Manchester United. And I'm not just saying it because of my own experiences. I've seen other people get the same treatment. And it's not fair. It really isn't fair. It's like, you cannot ask a question because... It's a tough question for them to answer and they don't want to answer it. That shouldn't be the way it is. That really shouldn't be the way it is. But I'm just talking about them incidences because you go right to the top of the tree and it's like everyone is talking like Gary Neville, like us fans, Roy Keane, every single pundit, everyone who's been in football, people more experienced than one more than what any of these United coaches, players, anyone within the club can even imagine of winning. And they're telling everyone exactly what we can all see which is how Manchester United are failing. But the arrogance and stubbornness within this club to not accept that we are in that place and talk in a way that just tries to convince you and just basically tells us that we are lying and we are completely wrong because we've got an opinion. It's just where it just it comes to an end with Manchester United. That is just too much for me. That... I, I, 
in my opinion, that is. I don't know what you guys think. We'll get your comments in in a minute, but it's like the fans don't care. It's like the pundits don't care. The experts don't care. No one else who has been involved in football, none of their opinions matter. I love getting opposition fans' opinions and people on the outside looking in at Manchester United. I love that because it's unfiltered and it's just straight to the point. It is. Like, early on in the season, I heard some Arsenal fans talking. I can't remember where or what channel it was. It probably will have been AFTV and who it was on it. I can't remember. But he was just saying, like, him, they did the full roundup show at the start of the season of, like, who uh, were the front runners, where clubs were going to be. And then one of them said, look, Manchester United are literally on an edge right now. It could just go that way or it could go that way. But I'm not convinced. I'm pretty certain it's going to go that way, which is off the other side and the, the wrong side and exactly where we are right now. So other fans can see exactly what is going on at this football club. Manchester United fans are starting to see it and not believing the hype that the club sort of spills out all of the time. And now we're in a position where everybody knows what's happening. Everyone's sick of talking about it all the time. Pundits are like, and nothing changes. There are players at this football club that can change things and remove that angle that everyone is going in on on this football team right now. There is, there is ways around it, but they just will not do it. He will not accept that they are wrong. And that, for me, is the biggest thing in all of this. The acceptance side of things. The uh, accountability of Manchester United right now. And I feel, just me and my opinion, that like you said, if someone actually went into United, so any else come in, and one person just said, look, we've got it wrong. I think that would just spread like wildfire. It, an acceptance would would come. And it would just spread through the rest of the football club. Like, we've been doing this wrong. They just won't accept it. They will not accept that they have got things wrong. And I feel this is the big problem. Roy Keane knows it. Roy Keane talking is just complete and utter sense to me. It is. Like, some of his stuff is dinosaur and old school. And you you know it doesn't work in the modern day football, in the modern day, in the modern day game. But what he is saying is like, look, look, we're 31 games in. The season is nearly over. Seven games to go. Minus one. And nowhere near the top four. Minus one goal difference. The amount of defeats that we've had, 12. It's like, you cannot ignore what is happening right now. Manchester United are not competing and are a million miles away from competing. For any us to work, we do need to have the revenues come into this football club as well. People are just accepting it and hoping that Ineos can just turn this around. They're not going to be able to turn this around unless things are working right on the pitch. No matter what you do off the pitch, and it will help set the culture that comes within on the pitch, but unless everybody is on board with it and everyone's moving in the same direction, this is why I don't think Ineos will accept what Ten Hag has been saying, what Ten Hag has been producing on the pitch, and what these players are doing on the pitch and how they perform and get constant game time, even if they are absolutely crap. Like Willie Cambuela now, we're looking at him and going, he starts against Bournemouth on Saturday, he has to. He probably will do because there's no one else available. But even if even if players were available, would you want that enthusiasm and that feel-good factor in your team? Or would you want to bring back the unknown, which is every other centre-back at this football team right now? Either injuries, attitude, quality... You know what you're getting there. Like, let's just ride it out. Let's play him in. Eric Ten Hag, I think, and I've always said this, I think he's sacked himself personally. And just the way he talks and the way he acts, the way his in-game management is, it's like, uh, it was a great uh, point from a lot of the journalists said it yesterday. Like, you brought Garnacho off against Chelsea, you lost all attacking output and it just seemed to disappear. He brought Garnacho off against Liverpool and it was constantly backs to the wall. You cannot keep subbing Garnacho off. He looks tired. Yes, I know that. But you have to sort of, I don't know if you can train it into the players, how they handle themselves, how they manage themselves through the game. Pointless running like Marcus Rashford does, like Bruno Fernandes does. You've got top, top pros there that are not handling and looking after themselves in the game, which is setting the standard for these young lads going forward. It's like you run around forever in a day. It's fantastic. It's brilliant. And everyone loves it. But it's not helping the player out. It's wasting energy. And the best teams, best coaches and best setups in every division and every single country across the planet have, have a training setup where players can actually know when they go for it more, when to attack more, when to press more. You look at all the best teams and they have moments in games where they sit back. They take a, they take a breath, they recruit, 
they recoup, regroup, sorry, and just reserve their energy levels. We don't do that. We're just erratic all over the pitch every single game. And it is a case where Manchester United's injuries, I, I have to accept this as well. And you have to you have to sort of give the right amount of game time to play. You can't overcook everyone. I know this, but the injuries I feel have, and this is the only defence I've got, like you can talk about the issues on at Carrington, you can talk about the issues in training and stuff like that, but the injuries this season, like we just said, with McTominay now out for three weeks, again, that means uh, more game time uh, for Casemiro, more game time for Maynou, Bruno's never going to be dropped, will Mason Mount come in now? We don't know, but the injuries really have hampered Manchester United this season and Tenag, that's the only defence I've got of it. And I just feel like we can go in on the training ground, the training tactics and everything like that and where all the injuries are coming from. But still, you have to look at it and go, there is an in-game management that we can have. You don't need to play Bruno Fernandes every single game. If we're talking about resting up the younger players and giving them a chance, you can do it with the first team players as well. Because the first team players have failed and they look as knackered as the younger lads do. Casemiro dead on his feet, poor again yesterday. Bruno, apart from his moments that he had, I thought he was poor again yesterday. Mainu, honestly, like he wasn't having a fantastic game. He was all right, but the goal pretty much took him up to another level again, another moment. This is what's happening with this team. And going back to what I said at the start and what Roy Keane was saying is he's exactly right and what Gary Neville is right. There is no structure to our play. Uh, there is no style to that play. You don't know what every player is doing. You don't know what position sometimes players are playing because they do what they want. And when you're in opposition, it's dead easy to play against. And I said it yesterday. I've seen what Liverpool were doing yesterday and they bamboozled United. We, we did not have a clue how to handle their setup when they had the, they had possession of the ball. We were clueless, absolutely clueless with it. And until that moment came and Liverpool literally just lost the plot for like 15 minutes in that second half and United took advantage of it. And they deserve credit for that, but that's exactly what Keenan Neville has said, like out of the blue moments which change games, like that is United. You just don't know what you're getting. And it is uncertainty and a worry for every single fan, every single game we go into. You just don't know. You don't know what's coming. You can guarantee that you're going to get a certain amount of chances and City, Arsenal, Liverpool are all going to play a certain way. Even Spurs and Villa, you know how they're going to play. There's five top teams. Oh, just coincidentally, they're the five teams ahead of us, miles ahead of us right now in the league. They have a structure. They have a manager that the players trust and they have a system which works for them and look at their injuries. None of them have been as bad as what Manchester United are. Liverpool, you could say yes. They have been a little bit more unlucky, but... There is a way that they have handled the amount of games that they've played and they've all had more games than Manchester United. So that's just what I wanted to get out in terms of in line of what Neville and Keane was saying. I'm going to come into the chat and give you guys your chance. Sorry, I went on for quite a bit there, guys. So I'm going to scroll up and bring it in. General Food here. The Glazers have built a toxic environment fueled by some of the players we have. Pogba was toxic. Martial has become infected, followed by Sancho and Rashford, says General Food. In Michael Bethway... How would you rate uh, our performance against Liverpool yesterday? Four out of ten, mate, I would rate it. And the moments kept us in it. That's how bad we were. I'm not a, I'm not spinning a negative on it. It was a good result and I would have took it at the start. It looks worse because of the games against Chelsea and Brentford. I'm not forgetting how we played. Like, two points out of three games. Let's not forget that. And we were winning all of them going into uh, what, injury time against Chelsea and bloody... Brentford and the last uh, last 10 minutes against Liverpool and we threw it all away. Poor, poor mentality. Andy Oates says, people say we should be challenging for the top four. Uh, laugh out loud. Uh, never mind which players United would get in City's Liverpool side and Arsenal side. Uh, forgets how many would get in the Villa side. Maybe two players, that's all. That is the, the biggest uh, criticism I think a lot of people say. It's like, back in the day, you could do a matched-up 11 with every single team on the planet with United. No. Like, I don't think Arsenal, City or Liverpool would take any Manchester United player. I mean, you could mention some, get in the chat and let me know which ones. Like, we are, they are so far ahead of us, I don't know if they would take anyone from our team. Like, I'm like, you could talk Garnacho, Menu. Players like that, I think they're the only ones that people would actually be discussing right now as to getting into anyone else's eleven. I think from Manchester United side, anyway. 
Uh, let me see now. So Jim uh, and Brailsford taking uh, to Big Sap. Big Sam to Old Trafford. Big Sam, next United manager. I wonder, uh, even they know that Big Sam wouldn't work at Manchester United. I'm not concerned about that at all. Uh, if we win every one of our games on Liverpool, lose them, we finish ahead. We finish behind them. Yeah, we cannot win the league now, by the way. Manchester United mathematically are out of the title race. So there's officially another trophy gone. Just for you statos out there anyway. One thing more important than winning trophies is identity. We need a team that has a core of academy players surrounded by experienced players. This was the blueprint for Ferguson and Busby. It takes time to get there and the mess that has been created by the poor, poor running and poor recruitment side of things from United over the last decade is going to take time to get to that. It's right, mind, gaming, uh, mind gardening. It's just going to take time to get there. We've got the core of the young players through. I just don't think we've got the money to buy in the experienced players that we need right now. So we're going to have to nurture prospects slash youngish good players coming through into our our main focal point players, I would say. Like who they are, I don't know. But you know what I mean by that. We can't go out and buy Galacticos. We can't go out and buy the best. Uh, Mbappe, Bellingham, Kane, uh who else is out there? There's quite a few, isn't there? There's them sort of players like the Rices, the big, big money players. They're out of our, they're out of our, uh, they're out of our reaches. We cannot get them players in at the football club now. So we have to find the next ones down and create something with them. Like, I'm really impressed with what's happening at the academy. I keep going on about it every single stream. I know, and I'm not apologising for it either. It is a breath of fresh air, and you've seen. You've seen the fearlessness in Willy Cambuela, Kobe Mainu, Garnacho. You've seen it in these players coming through. We had another one in the mass on the bench yesterday from the under-18 side. They are destroying everything in their path in the academy leagues right now, Manchester United. I'm just really happy. And this is my big, big hope. Like, And everyone can see it. And they will, que- they will quietly say this, opposition fans, but Manchester United right now, if we get it right... And in your nurture this academy and what we've got right now, then Manchester United will be going places going forward. We won't need to spend as much money. We do now because it's such a mess and there's so much work to clear out all of the crap and headaches that we've got at the football club. But that academy is going to save Manchester United an absolute fortune. It's like people don't know that Manchester United actually bought Willie Cambuela. From the show, uh, I think when he was 16, under 16 level, uh, he was. Manchester United paid 4 million euros for Willie Cambuela. We paid, uh, I think, what was it, 750 or something like that, I think, for Alejandro Garnacho. This is how academies work right now. So United seen a player, and this is what gives me hope, like the recruitment side of things. When to spend certain amounts of money on talent that you can really see prospering. So there is good work going on behind the scenes with United right now, and we cannot forget that. The academy side of things is absolutely on point and is only going to get better when you bring in the likes of Jason Wilcox and his experience at Manchester City. You look at them academy players that City have brought through now. Yes, they've, uh, uh, you could argue, cheated the way to get to this position where they are now, but the Fodens, the Bobs, the Lewises, them sorts of players that have come through. You look at uh, Palmer at Chelsea as well, who also came through. Absolute stars. That's what happens when you've got a properly run academy. Yes, the first team is uh, and is the most important and needs to be running perfect to actually bring these players through to get the best out of them. And right now, uh, this is why I'm praising them so much because they're coming into absolute an absolute mess. Like our senior players are a disgrace, an absolute disgrace when it comes to being role models for our current academy players coming through. They really are. Like, their performances are abysmal. Their attitude on the pitch, some of them, has been an absolute... Honestly, it's been the worst thing I've ever seen. Like, it is absolutely horrendous at this football club uh, with some of them senior players right now. I just hope that we will see that change under Ineos and they are cutthroat to a point where even if we have to pay to get certain players out or take a hit on a certain player's fee just to get them out of here and it may dint our transfer budget just to see them out and clear the decks so we can rebuild, redo the foundations of this team 
then uh, you know what? We might have to accept that this summer. We do. It has to be brutal. And I think it makes a bigger statement, even if United don't buy many players this summer. We need them, I know. But if we don't buy so many players this summer to strengthen this team, uh, but all of the crap, and I mean the crap, and you know who that is, that is, and it has to be quite deep. All of that is gone. Then I think that makes a bigger statement than actually bringing in certain players to me. It does. Guys, again, I'm sorry I've gone on. Uh, I'm going to get into the comments. Jonathan Dayton uh, says, uh, We get treated like cattle on match day because there are so many of us. Uh, we need a new stadium so we can get a good match day experience. Big screen, better seats, better catering, more room to eat. 100% agree with that. That is coming. Uh, it's going to take time, but it is. One game from an FA Cup final could end the season with a trophy. <clears throat> Drew, we could. We really could, and I hope we do. I do. Uh, like We've got a chance because we are that moment's team. And the FA Cup suits us. It really does. It is like going back to the 80s with this United team. Uh, Mid-table fodder that can turn up on any day and beat anyone. I think we've proven that. Uh, Ineos are at fault for not buying uh, the club sooner. We bought no one after New Year. Uh, I can't say it's... I mean, that's the Glazers that dragged that out to make sure that they got the best deal out of it. I'm sure Ineos would have wanted to get through the door as quick as he could. I think you guys need uh, a strong clear out at the club, uh, same as we did at Arsenal. Big up, Adam. Cheers for that, uh, Tarnik. You're right about that. Like Arsenal are proof that it can be done. They cleared a lot of players out they got rid of uh, uh, they got rid of the captain Aubameyang like he was like loved by fans at that football club but Arteta made a point of the team being first and not one individual player like I think even Declan Rice at his price tag that he is you can't even call him a, a Galactico player he just comes in and he's he just does a job he works in the team it's like a hundred million pound player. Now you're thinking that guy's going to win the game on their own. That's the sort of that's the sort of play that everyone expects. That's the the way that people look at hundred million pound plus signings. It's like that player there. It's Roy of the Rovers. He's going to go and win that game on his own. But Declan Rice isn't. Arsenal have paid a fortune for a man that's going to come in and work in their system. That's the difference. It's not just going out and buying a name and hoping that he can change a team around on his own. They spent money. Because they knew exactly what he would do to how Arsenal were already playing. And that's what they've got right. And that's what a structure and an understanding from that top level right down to the football pitch is. So that goes from like, the likes of Edu. and the owner. So it goes from the owners to the likes of Edu who works alongside uh, Arteta in the recruitment side of things. They all work together. They all know where they're going. And it comes down to the pitch, the coaches and everything. You can see that everyone is at one. Is at one at Arsenal right now and I'm jealous I am I am jealous of Arsenal and how that club is being run right now it is a proper football club again like they lost their way they got the stadium they've now got the full infrastructure it is a enjoyable match day experience at Arsenal I'll give them that the setup is brilliant and now they've got a team which is competing and is worthy of that stadium at the Emirates now and yet we can only look at it and go well we have been left behind by us. They got it right. They realised where they were going wrong and they were patient. That is one thing that they have, they have been. They have been patient. So we'll see if United do follow suit on the patient side. That's where I don't think we will and I think they will just go in and get a new manager. Uh, it's Woodward, Mirto, Arnold's fault. Uh, they have given stupid contracts and players down tools. It says United till I die. You have to protect Garnacho and Menu too, says Graham. Yeah, I think I did touch on that when I was talking about that, but yeah, you do. Uh, we put up with crap facilities uh, when we are winning on the pitch. <coughs> Excuse me. But uh, then play, uh, then the play is crap. We start looking at everything else uh, as match day fans. Garnacho did look tired, though. We reruns all day for the team, uh, says Kaz. I'm going to scroll down a little bit more, try and catch up with a few other people. Uh, uh, Preta, uh, Prashant says, Yesterday Rashford was supposed to play till uh, till the end uh, and have the counter-attacking threat, but uh, he too got injured. I don't know what Rashford's injury is. We are going to have to give him the benefit of doubt and say that he is injured on this one and maybe we'll get an update through the week on Marcus Rashford. Obviously, there's no press conference scheduled now until Friday, so we're not going to know anything until then. 
Blaze 2011. Hi, Adam. I'm a Sheffield United fan. Uh, you think we can beat you in a few weeks? Yes, I do, mate. I do think you can. Like, Sheffield United drew with Chelsea and we couldn't beat Chelsea. Like, everyone's talking about that Chelsea game and like how well Man United did to actually come back against Chelsea. Let's not forget how shit Chelsea are. Like, seriously. No disrespect to Blades uh, and his team. But if you can hold Chelsea to a draw, then... If Sheffield United can hold Chelsea to a draw, then there is something wrong. Like, Pochettino, eh, I think he is... He should be more at risk than Ten Hag. Like, he really should. But I think United, with the ownership issue going on right now, I think this is why the pressure is is coming in harder on uh, the likes of Ten Hag right now than any other manager. And the name of United and what, what it means. You know what it's like. Uh, I doubt Eric Ten Hag would have substituted Rashford had he not been due to his injury. No, I think it would have been Hoyland who came off. We know what it is. Uh, Ford says, uh, personally, uh, I don't think manager is the problem. Uh, our hangover from Fergie time is always, uh, we don't build anything before we compare how uh, they used to behave in a well-structured team. Ramo also says, this manager is not the guy to be patient with. There's nothing he's good at. Uh, two different opinions right there. There, Compass Smurf, uh, why are you pretending any manager is allowed to sell anyone that they want here? Uh, that's him talking to Andrew, I think, not me on that one. Uh, Belfast, uh, the therapy reactions. So, Jim, I agree. Uh, Marcus does a permanent football intelligence injury. <laughs> Chris Welder has won before at Old Trafford. Uh, thanks for that, Graham. Uh, really love that input. <laughs> just the way... I hate Chris Wilder as well. I do. I just cannot stand the guy at all. Like, his interviews do my head in. He's like a really... He's like one... He just reminds me of a Bilbo Baggins with a bad attitude. That's what he just... He just reminds me of that. It's like, how dare you question me? How dare you ask me that question? Uh, If Chelsea... If Chelsea would have won yesterday, they would have been three points behind with a game in hand for them and a better goal difference. That's crazy. Yes, that is crazy. Uh, I reckon if Anthony played for Sitter, he'd be world class. I don't miss a game uh, down uh, down under in the Gold Coast of Oz. Love the show, mates. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, love it when we get the overseas fans in that are all over at crazy working times watching uh, Man United games and tuning into the streams. Uh, at the bottom of your stream, at the bottom of your screen there on the uh, scroll, you can see uh, the interesting facts. Uh, I will be putting things in there for you guys to see. Uh, we're doing like a little bit of uh, Sky Sports News, little banner there, aren't we? Uh, please give the video a like, guys. Uh, make sure you're subscribing as well if you are tuning in for the first time. Download our Sofa Score app. Scan the QR code in the bottom right-hand corner, guys. It's completely free. Uh, and don't want anything from you. All we're asking you to do is just click on the link in the description or scan the QR code on your screen there. You can see it, the blue one in the bottom right-hand corner. That's it. Get that free app on your phone. It is class. Trust me, it's class. All of your up-to-date stats and info on every single team in the Prem, all the way down the pyramid to the National Leagues and World Sports as well. Uh, odds, everything. In-game, action, streams even. Get onto it, guys. It is absolutely brilliant. You won't be disappointed. Uh, but yeah, uh, the little uh, update box at the bottom there, guys. Sky Sports News style, scrolling across. Uh, no teenager has directly been involved in as many goals as Alejandro Garnacho this season. He's having a very, very good season. I love Garnacho. He's infectious. He really is. Uh, and he has been a breath of fresh air this season along the likes, alongside the likes of Kobe Mainu. They really have kept us going. They have. Uh, Brian Duffy is in the chat and has donated five new memberships out there for people to grab hold of now. And you're going to want to because I'm going to tell you why in a minute. Uh, them new members are Ramo, Darrell, United Till I Die, Belfast Man United Therapy Reactions, mouthful, and United Till I Die and Harper Lee. Uh, guys, we are doing another watch along. We may even do a Champions League watch along this week. I'll keep you posted. Uh, but we're live on TFO. 
which is another platform we are working with alongside YouTube uh, for all of the watch-alongs for Manchester United away games right now. It's Bournemouth this weekend. Uh, we'll be kicking off at 5 o'clock on Saturday, guys, so make sure you're tuned in for that. Members only at the moment as we build the channel and the platform. I'll keep you posted later on through the week about everything that's going on there. But if you are in green and I remember, make sure you're thanking Brian if you have just been inducted into that Hall of Fame and that legendary bunch of people which are FUTV members, uh, then you can join us this weekend as well. Uh, make sure you give Brian a thank you, please, guys. Uh, Billy Prout. Uh, hi, Adam. Can you see United selling Bruno or Rashford this summer? Uh, not this summer, no. Uh, because of reasons I've said before, which are that there's too much... There's too much to to do before we get to them too. Uh, like uh, honestly, if it was me, I would make Rashford my priority to get rid of, uh, alongside Sancho and Mason Greenwood right now. Uh, they're the priorities I feel. Them three players leaving Manchester United sets a completely different tone. Rashford came off yesterday for Anthony, and. The game changed, like the intensity, the energy, everything changed instantly when Rashford came off. You just knew it. Like Anthony was snapping into tackles, tackling back. He was losing his plot. If it weren't for Amrabat, Anthony would have had a complete meltdown moment and been sent off in that game. We forgot to bring that up yesterday, but Amrabat saved Anthony from getting a red card because he was ready for ripping Anthony Taylor's head off yesterday. He like gone. His head had just completely gone. And where I... Love a bit of enthusiasm and anger and determination in a player. He was <laughs> he was off it yesterday. He was gone. Completely gone. Uh, but yeah, to answer the question, I would get rid of Rashford. Uh, I don't think United will or Bruno this summer. Definitely not. Boxing straight talk. How lucky was that draw yesterday? People celebrating a draw against Liverpool team that couldn't even finish their dinner is telling me just how far we've fallen since Fergie. I don't think anyone outside was... For one, people I spoke to boxing was that we were really, really lucky. I did a poll last night on the show with Jay and I think the majority was saying, about 60% were saying, we were lucky to get a draw yesterday rather than uh, unfortunate not to win that game. Uh, I think what you got to look at is that Manchester United get themselves in positions and collapse. That's the biggest worry. But yeah, I wasn't having any of that game yesterday being a turning point. I thought the game against Liverpool in the FA Cup was a turning point and that completely backfired on me. So I'm not going to fall for a draw yesterday when we were battered for a good 70 minutes, in my opinion, and only turned up for 20. And luckily we did something in that 20 minutes. I'm not being carried away by that. United Spotlight, who has been a member for a massive five months. What a legend. He's just renewed. Rashford, number one out the door. I agree. Yeah, there is news that Inter Milan have also offered Anthony Martial a contract. So that is the first official, I think, contact with Anthony Martial. Like we know he's going anyway. So that's good news for the football club. Uh, if he's out the door, then we can make room for someone else coming through. That's always uh, a positive. Uh, it's just hopefully Manchester United can get something done in bringing in another forward to support uh, Rasmus Hyland. Give the video a like, guys. We're only 25 away from hitting that 200 mark. Legends this morning, a Monday morning show with over 200 likes. That's what we like to see. Keep it going, guys. It's actually lunchtime. I know, hopefully you're not all getting in trouble sneaking off. Hope you're on your lunch break and you've uh, not got your... Well, I hope you have got your little laptop on or whatever and you're watching the stream uh, while trying to work. I'm absolutely shattered from watching WrestleMania last night, trying to hang in there with a coffee. Daryl, you've nearly done, mate. You're nearly all the way through, pal. You've done well. You've done well. Uh, Boxing Straight Talk. Jonathan, that's down to bad management. The owners who use a club uh, to make money, not for sporting reasons. People uh, having a conversation between themselves again. This chat would have been different if Liverpool could have taken their chances. Uh, it should have been at least seven goals. 28 shots we conceded again yesterday. It's around the average right now, that isn't it, for this team. And we play anyone. But, uh, I think something that Ten Hag needs to address, but I don't think he will. Like I said at the start of the show, he just seems to be walking blind into these games and ignoring what other people are saying, which is clear. So... Yeah, that's my opinion on that. 
But guys, that pretty much is everything covered. Uh, all of your updates and everything that's been said. Uh, any more news that does come about, I'll be all over it today. But we will be back at 6.30 tonight to the evening show. More interaction and giving you a better chance uh, to have your say on the show as well. Make sure you get your comments in. If I have missed you in the live, I've talked a lot today. I'm sorry, I do apologise for not being able to bring everyone's comments up. But if you do want to get your comments in on the show uh, after the video finishes right now, the live finishes that is, then get them in there. We'll try and come back to as many as possible. Brian Duffy says, great show as usual, Adam. Kaz and the chat. Yeah, Rashford out, out, out. On that note, give the video a like.